Hello everyone, I'm Mr. Mocha Lover, and thank you for joining me here. Today we're going to start another campaign, a new campaign in Old World Blues, Rise of the Khanate mod. Well, Rise of the Khanate is just the name, but this time we have added a sub mod. That is correct, you read the title correctly. We are going to play as the Enclave starting today. And as you can tell, I've already tried playing as the Enclave before, and it was pretty much fun. Pretty fun. Um... I'm using, I forget exactly which sub mod I'm using, I think there might only be one. Either, either way, I've listed the official name of it in the description below. So anyways, the Enclave. Honestly, I don't know that much about the Enclave, but... Navarro was destroyed by the NCR and the Brotherhood forces in a joint strike to finish off the final bastion of the Enclave. And most people thought they were destroyed. Under the, sleeping, under the nose of the sleeping NCR, Sergeant Dornan has been working tirelessly to unite the Enclave remnants under his banner, contacting the many hidden civilian bases of the Enclave to integrate a new generation of America's finest. And what I want to do, as the Enclave, even though we have political infighting right now, is reform the United States of America, in which that will put us pretty much at war with everyone eventually. So, because I played this I'll, just a tiny bit earlier, by a tiny bit, I mean for about two or three years. Um, what I'm going to do is take off historical AI. I'm not sure if that really does anything for this mod. But I'm going to keep it off. And for custom game rules, no one has anything on. It's pretty much all standard stuff that we are given. So, Alright, let's go in and load up. Uh, let's see, we're in the Enclave. Next up, New Reno. Let's start with four divisions. And four of them are power armor, which I'm going to try to emphasize power armor in this run. So, yeah. I'm going to emphasize power armor. I'm not not going to say I'm not going to use infantry, but I'm definitely going to use more and more power armor. And right now, because I have played this a little bit before, we, before I even started recording this, I'm not going to do a focus just yet. Now, let's see. We're going to do some proficiency, cap, and growth. And then we want to get to organized Tato farming. But not yet, because it's a year ahead of time. I want to get faster construction speed. Infantry stuff is nice, but we can't really do that either. Uh, we'll do land doctrine. Because I'm going to try to go for power armor, since we will have a limited amount of manpower initially. I am going to do... Refined warfare. Yeah. Let's do that. And apparently, you might not have heard it, but uh, someone just left a comment on my channel, which is cool. Thanks for the comment. But uh, now I can't see my air doctrine or my naval doctrine, which I guess doesn't even matter since I have no access to the sea. So, uh, like I said, I'm going to try to do mostly just a power armor run with some infantry. Uh, but this power armor already, it's only 10 combat width, but they've got 50% hardness and 46% armor. And if I can just make them better, so be it. If I could add in some support equipment, that would be pretty cool as well. And we have some, we have one division of Enclave Auxiliaries, which is all right. Cool. So, like I said, we're not going to do national focus yet because right now our national spirits of Enclave scientists as well as Enclave officers already make us take or increase our Enclave support or elite our our elite support, which we do not want. We want to become intellectuals. And make sure we can get rid of any sort of civil war we potentially could have. So right now, I'm not doing any sort of uh, focus. Because I need as much political power as humanly possible. Awesome. Actually, for you, uh, I don't have that many extra guns, so I don't want to train them. So in the Lair of the Beast, we are on the very borders of the NCR, a rogue nation occupying American soil. We cannot deny that they would destroy us if they become fully aware of our existence. Luckily for us, the bear is blind. We can buy bureaucracy, infighting, and an inf ineffectual leader. With the right efforts made, we can hide under the very nose of the NCR until we are strong enough to reveal our plans, but we cannot keep them in the shadows forever. It will become harder and harder to conceal ourselves as time goes on. Which means I have to spend political power to hide me from the NCR, because if they find out that I'm alive, well... Yeah, um, apparently uh, the mod didn't crash, but it just went to desktop, so my apologies about that, but basically, we can't let the NCR find us. So, this is why I'm going to spend some political power to get rid of any sort of idea that the Enclave is still alive, 
And obviously you have to take this decision within two months. So, right now we're just kind of hanging out. Historically, I mean, I guess it's not really historically, but the game, if it was controlled by the AI, they would have already gone to war with New Reno so we could take him out. I will take out New Reno as soon as I can once we have enough PP, enough political power. Without going for a focus, this is really good for getting a lot of political power, which is really nice. Also, at the current moment, I have some coffee, but it's probably a little too hot for me to drink. So, um, I mean, the Enclave starts very weak. We have no infantry equipment, or we need infantry equipment. We need more power armor. Desert Rangers declared war on Vipers. And I'm literally waiting until the very last day. Because eh, it doesn't really matter. Just go ahead and do that. Cool. 92. I need... I ha And the reason I'm trying to get this political power is so I can get a political advisor under Bor Boris T. He's a reformer. will give me more daily intellectual support. And then once I have him, I can go for my focuses or my foci. Which will be great. Because right now, the elites, they're still... Getting a lot of support from their scientists and their officers. So be it. And yeah, we still need some equipment production. Actually, I have no factories. Look at that, no factories. So basically, early on with this game, if I lose a war against New Reno, I'm dead. I'm literally quite dead. Oops. Had a couple days go over. Go ahead and go with Boris T. Now we can finally get some more daily support for our reformer faction and do our escape. Alright, so, years ago we managed to escape from the destruction of the main Enclave forces at Navarro. The manner in which we survived can still be felt today. We... Let's see, you give us... Fought our way out with ma with power armor, escaped using vertebrates, deserted before fighting got bad. Uh, I don't... I really like that you get three more divisions, which it could be really good, but I don't have 500 manpower. I really don't want to lose 500 manpower, but even though divisions are great. A uh, stockpile of transports and gunships are nice, but don't really need them at the moment. And deserted before fighting got bad. A lot of extra manpower sounds really nice, seeing as our country only has 14,000. So I'm going to go do, do that, and they will do our choice next. Negative political, negative political power is so much better than negative manpower. Our choice. So, Sergeant Dornan, our leader here is well respected by both the reformer and the purist faction within the enclave. Nonetheless, neither see him as a viable president and have presented their own candidates. The purists have selected Franklin Anderson as their candidate, while the reformers are led by Douglas Granite. It appears that the purist faction has the advantage, but the support of the Sarge could still tip the scales in favor of the reformers. So, I could go with the purists, but I really want to reform the United States of America, so then I'm going to go with um, Douglas Granite and Dornan thinks or decides that Dr. Anderson is a moron. Awesome. Hello, you fuzzy person. Very fuzzy. Alright, and we'll do our president next. Sins of the Father. Which actually does have some importance as to what you decide with this decision. So, our president. Granite's past is a controversial subject in our, in our midst, or in our mids made all the more contentious by rumors spread by purists. The cause is Granite's father and his relationship to the Chosen One. The purists accuse Granite's father of treason for aiding the Chosen One and destroying the oil rig, but lack any evidence. Despite the fact that he will deny these allegations as nothing but political slander, Douglas remembers clearly what his father told him about that faithful day on the oil rig. Was he aided by the Chosen One and then went their separate ways? Just speaking of the Chosen One, let me tell you who your mother was. Ooh... I don't, you definitely don't want less stability early on. Let me, I'll just say that. And he didn't aid the Chosen One. So we can get Mutant Sympathies for more non-core manpower or more war support and stability. He didn't aid. Uh, hold on. This is important because with the Reformer path that we are going to take. D coming down here because we, there is something about expanding the definition of human or segregation, I believe. Integrate officers. Americans one and for all. Reject the ghouls. Accept the ghouls. This, this, hmm, maybe not. Genetic screening. Mutant question. So this might be important. I just have sympathies. Um, I could really use more war support, so he, I'm going to go with 
I didn't aid them. And Douglas's youth. After traveling around with his son for a brief few years, Granite Senior established contact with one of the Enclave civilian vaults, set up as a contingent contingency to repopulate the American mainland after the Enclave government cleansed it. Since President Dick Richard had lifted child-rearing restrictions, the vault's population had exploded. Nonetheless, it was a safer place for a child than the wasteland. Thus, Douglas spent most of his youth in the safety of the vault. Like most children in the Enclave's vaults, Granite was raised with a fervent hatred of communism. Sadly, 200 years of Enclave propaganda and living in a vault run under a command economy meant that he and most other members of the Enclave were left with a vague understanding of what communism was. Ah, as such, Granite was... Spent history class playing on his pit boy or knew all Ameri Amer enemies of America must be communist. Um, if I do this, I can't do the other one, obviously. I get more stability. But if I want to do the one on the left, I can still do over here. This is a huge focus tree. Uh, infiltrate the NCR, but you get down to anti communist propaganda, so I get more stability, anyways, in the future. I get 150 political power and get the cause of the Great Wars, which I'm going to go with that. I am anti-communist and Douglas's first contact. When Douglas was 17, the population of the Enclave Vault reached the utter limits of its life support systems. As a result, a large portion of the healthy and strong were ordered to leave the safety of the Vault to establish contact with the largest group of Enclave remnants led by an old Navarro drill sergeant. Douglas, however, was quick to contact with his father's granite company instead, slipping away from the rest unseen. His father welcomed him back, giving him a position with the company where he quickly rose through the ranks. When Douglas was a lieutenant of the Granite Defense Company, he was contacted by a party under attack by raiders. The call sounded desperate and came from... So, this could influence who we can ally with later. So, I slipped away and contacted by... Kaisar's scout seeking new lands. Let's go with that. Uh, when Douglas revived with his team, the situation of the defenders had grown more dire, their battered defenses crumbling quickly under a determined but almost equally attritioned raider party. Looking over the sad state of both parties, Douglas decided to become ruthless and get more manpower or help take down the raiders. This will give us a connection to the faction of Kaisar's legion, gains national spirit learning from Kaisar. I could do this. But I like the Ruthless perks. We get faster just by war gold time. Now, I could have allied with the uh, brother, Not the Brotherhood. I could have increased my support with Kaisar's Legion. But uh, not this time. Not this time, Kaisar. In the future, maybe, if I ever do this again. I don't know if I ever will. But probably will. But you never know. Um, planes? Are we doing planes? Oh, let's get some planes. I love planes. Even though I have no military factories to spend them on. So right now, we got to keep an eye on this. Right now, the popularity of the purest faction is going down, which is good, but it's going to ramp straight back up once these Enclave scientists and officers are available, I'll say. Or pissed off, I'll say. Cool, reform. For the first time in centuries, our authority has extended beyond core Enclave members. Considering our previous interactions with these new newfound citizens could easily be misinterpreted as attempted genocide, proving ourselves the legitimate government will take time and effort. Certain choices we will make will increase or decrease our legitimacy. Higher legitimacy Legitimacy comes with bonuses to our rule and allows for new choices in our focus tree. Low legitimacy will come with penalties at least until we find a way to keep the Wastelanders loyal regardless of their opinions. You'll notice that the negative effects of our low legitimacy up, up here at the top are currently very, very weak. The effects of legitimacy become more and more severe as our population expands beyond core Enclave members. So it just adds the legitimacy modifier. I can start with 5 legitimacy or the Enclave will tell them what to think. Which we get more war support and political power. Well, we'll start with some legitimacy to begin. Alright, next up. Now, we need to go to war with Reno pretty quickly. And I like this. But let's go ahead and get the City of Crime, which just gives us a Annex War Goal against old Reno. New Reno, I should say. And right now, because the purists outnumber us, we could get an assassination attempt. Hopefully that doesn't happen, but that's why I had 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 to go with um, Boris here. Because right now, we're still increasing our popularity, despite the purists. Traders among our scientists, many of our best and brightest were once part of the secret projects, performed at Navarro and the Rig. For this, they were persecuted relentlessly after the fall of Navarro. None of them have forgotten this, few have forgot forgiven it. Since the recent elections, progress on some projects have slowed down, laboratory equipment has gone missing, and reports of unpatriotic behavior have become common. Which means I lose stability, research speed, and more daily elite support. 
and s secrets stolen last night, a small group of traitors made off with the Ventibird and almost all of our old military codes. The communication suggests that they were opportunists who saw a better future in selling the codes than wherever the Enclave is headed. Regardless of their intentions, this betrayal is a severe blow. Many military bases, including the heavily fortified lower levels of Sierra Army Depot, are now forever lost to us. And right now, I'm going to blame it on the purists just because I can we so I can weaken them. So right now, I can do a crackdown once I have enough political power so that I can get I lose a little bit of manpower, less stability, but I become more popular in terms of intellectuals, which we want. And unfortunately, I will lose Lieutenant Mary Orwich, who is actually a pretty good army leader, but you know, I don't want to have any sort of civil war. Ooh, more monthly population. Yes, please. That would be lovely. Oh. Oh, and this we have to, we definitely have to keep an eye on this. Oh. States three. Hide activities from the NCR. So be it. So be it. I need more political power, so actually I'm gonna not wait. Go with the city of crime. Go to war with the new Reno people. And immediately do presidential victory speech so I can get that stability and political power. Let's go ahead and go to war. Because New Reno has up to 8 divisions of max, but at lowest, 4. Because we have power armor, I'm feeling a little bit okay. So first of all, we're going to split these guys off. I need you to go to Nixon. I need you to do this. Encircle and destroy. We're going to focus on the north real quick. Promotion. Recently, a commander position has opened up. There are two available candidates, either for promotion. An older, experienced Navarro veteran and a younger, outspoken reformer. Um, promote the experienced man or promote the loyal man. And this will help us become more popular with technocracy, which I actually want, so loyalty will be rewarded. In which we are 40%, and the purest faction is 44%. Nice. And right now, they can't pierce us, which is awesome. Go ahead and cut these guys off, if you can. You know what? Tell these guys to not move. Oh, we do not want to get encircled. That's bad. Yeah, do that. I want you to come around here. Take all the supply points. You come back up here and help drive this person down. Um, if you could come up here and help destroy that division, that'd be great. Good, just defend for now. Just move on up through here. Cool. We might lose... I don't think we we'll actually will lose anything. Which would be good. Um, well, we got cut off. Sucks. It happens. Just take all that extra territory. Nice. Make your way down here, please. And take out that division, too. Alright, so they came back up. Traitors in the officer's corps. The most recent election has stirred up latest, latent tensions in our officer corps. Many of the most experienced and respected military leadership are Navarro veterans, and there's not a man among them who has not lost a comrade here. It is unsurprising that many of them have been taken in Anderson's message of revenge against the NCR and mutants alike. With our government moving in another direction, tensions are high and there are whispers of traitors, which is basically the same thing as the Enclave... Um, the purists, scientists, don't like what we've done, so. They'll become a little bit more radical, which is something we do not want. God dang it, why did the thing pop up again? Uh, for this, I'm going to provoke the purists just so we get another crackdown. I think that'd probably be for the best for us. I don't want to compromise with anybody. Compromise sucks. <laughs> uh, cool. Um... So right now, we could do arranged disappearance of the oligarchy. Hold small speech for promoting technocracy. Because of our current makeup, I definitely want to reduce the power of the oligarchy. So let's do that. In which we become more and more pure, I suppose you could say. I'm not going to do this yet. I still have, well, actually, 32 days. Well, actually, it doesn't really hurt if we do this right now. Let's do that, I suppose. We get a good bonus. So these guys, go ahead and just wrap up this area up here. Shouldn't be too bad. The enemies can't pierce us yet, which is good. We don't have any military factories, which is not good. Go ahead and finish those guys up there. As we're defending against an army group of new Reno soldiers, which kind of sucks. Go ahead and do this. Push them back out. Yeah, go ahead and hold, because we're losing some equipment pretty majorly. Ah, uh, you want to attack this way? Attack this way, actually. Just crush them if you can. 
Send you guys this way to help take these guys out faster. Nice. If we could just get new Reno, that'd be awesome. Provoke the Pyrrhus, very nice. Get a justification for Crackdown. Next up, I'm going to go do Infiltrate the NCR because their suspicion will go down even further. And I can't do very much at the bottom. Hold small speech, more favor of technocracy. I need at least 50%, which will be important. Nice. Um, just take that and come back down here. Nice. Very good. Oh, okay, you guys got encircled. God dang it, you're not supposed to do that. Go ahead and try to break out. I can't afford to lose those divisions, so... Go ahead and hold. We actually cut this division off, which is kind of nice. Take this. Come down to Reno. Do that. And make sure these guys don't move. God, it's, these provinces are so small. It's nearly impossible to see. Oh, go ahead and try to take New Reno. There you go. We got him. I was a little worried there. We're going to take all states. Cool, and that gave us some military factories. That gave us four. Awesome. So we definitely need some power armor. Definitely need some common energy weaponry as well as some support equipment. Definitely focus high on this and then do that. Awesome. We actually have some military factories. Great. And we want to do the crackdown so we get less manpower, a little bit less stability, less popularity of oligarchy, more, more popularity of technocracy, and a little bit less manpower. We have to execute people from time to time, so be it. Nice. We are at 51%, which is actually very, very important. Ah, oh, very good. Yeah. Actually, I've got a while until we have, we're done with this video, which is awesome. Because I had that little hubbub earlier. Regardless, let's do Concentration of Force. Hurts our recruitable population, but we get more organization and recovery rate. And then... Can I do Tato Farming yet? No, 0.35 years still ahead of time. Uh, leather armor. Eh, let's go with, with some leather armor. So at least this will be good for actually getting stuff done. Uh, you might as well do these first instead of this, since our production or building up stuff is going to take forever. Awesome. We could do Enclave Radio for 0.2 daily political power, but I'm going to do Consolidate Power. Which will give us options to help root out purists and give us more stability, which is important for what we're going to have to do here. So if I can, I will increase my stability if need, if possible. I want to do the spy stuff, but whatever. So, Major General Grimm, our current field marshal, uh, speaks out in favor of Anderson. During a heated argument in the officer's mess hall today, Major General Grimm has loudly spoken out in favor of Franklin Anderson and his ideas about the Enclave's future. A few, choices words, a few choice words were aimed at both mutants of the NCR and our president, Douglas Granite. While the officer in question may be a capable leader in the field, we should note that the opinions of the commanders we appoint to lead. What they say in the mess hall and over the radio will always affect their loyal soldiers. So, he could be loyal to his opinions, or he's entitled to his opinions, which would hurt us, which we don't want. We get worse, more worse part, which doesn't help us. Demoted for entirely unrelated reasons, which might be good. But we lose more worse part and lose popularity technocracy and becomes a unit leader, even though he's like level 5 skill. I lose war support, but I can do this because I'm ruthless. I'm going to go with he dies, just because I don't need anyone trying to rebel against me in the future. So, I got to think about the future. Always think about the future. Nice. We need a new army or field commander. Uh, let's see. Bearer of Artillery, Thomas Remy Rim. Um, cool. You look really awesome. Chris Hamilton, regular. Skilled in leading, leading infantry. Uh, some of this. Oh, so Jack Shadow Churchill is a purist. Is loyal to Anderson. Um, frankly, I want to do Bearer of Artillery just because he's got Bearer of Artillery, which is really awesome. So you get plus 50% more attack. That's really cool. Cool, just do that for now. Hang out, have a good time. Get more equipment in, under your belt. And, let's see, scrap fighters, very nice. And, let's scrap die bombers, those aren't like fun. And we have consolidated power. Tensions have been high since the elections. It appears support for the peers have only intensified as a result, especially in the upper echelons of our government. To address the situation, we have collected all of those with grievances towards the new U.S. government into one room, awaiting answers from the new president. Someone hand me my speech so we get more popularity, or one room, 
which we remove treasonous scientists, treasonous officers, and we lose Churchill. The, we get less popularity of the oligarchy. We get 30% less stability, 30% less war support, and basically we get civil war. So I don't want to do that. I'm going to be a little bit more peaceful in my approach. So we get more political power and we get more support of technocracy, which is great. In which we will have to do purge the scientists eventually and then purge the officers. So right now, um, this stuff all is all pretty quick. I could do more Enclave radio stuff, which gives us more daily political power, which could be very, very useful. So let's do that first, before I do all the other stuff. Because we still have hide activities from the NCR. And we can demote purest officers and purest scientists, but we need to have 50% more stability. So, cafeteria incident. A disturbing photograph has been circulating among cafeteria staff, involving one of the staff members intentionally handling ingredients inappropriately. Uh, loose political power but get more war support or get more political power and lose war support I don't want to lose war support and political power is fine to lose a little bit of that so not bad mm, gotta love coffee enclave radio we're going to reform America my friends yeah daily uh, right now we still get a daily change of 0 0.01 which is awesome we're doing better slightly just slightly better on power armor it's going to take quite a quite a bit of time before we can actually get there. Enclave Radio, more daily political power. We can do anti-communist propaganda for more stability, cause of the Great War event, as well as political power. Crack the code. Um, the Bishop Incident allows your spies to send a radio broadcast costing... Ooh, yeah, we don't need to do that yet. Old World Radio could be nice for more political power. Uh, I want that stability, but... This also could give us some stability as well. Going cold turkey. Dealing with the Mordinos. Mordino, my friend. So we definitely want this. Hmm. We could do re disorganized remnants and go to eventually fools and dreamers. But we need more legitimacy. Awesome. There's a lot of reading in the first couple episodes of any campaign. So... Dealing with Mordinos. The Mordinos long represented the status quo of New Reno. That is to say, criminal criminality, exploitation, cams, and misery. They had many allies but no friends, and few are now willing to lay their lives down in defense of the Cam Lords. We may strike quickly and expect only limited resistance, but some have suggested that we should use the Mordinos to demonstrate we are serious about our old world values. So with this, we get more stability and legitimacy, which is what I want, just as is long overdue for more political power. I need more stability, so we're going to go with more legitimacy and stability. Next up, we can do checkmate. with. Uh, actually, don't do checkmate with the bishops. Don't do that one yet, because this could be turned into a problem very quickly. Let's do a shared dream with the rights. Dealing with the rights. And I have a lot of political power. I could use it for stuff, but... Uh, reroute Crimson Caravans. I need to do that one eventually. We're okay with hide activities from the NCR at the moment. I need to do this, but we have nowhere near the amount of stability that we need. To get more stability though, I will do instead improve worker conditions for more weekly stability because we already don't have any civilian factories to use, so there's really no point to not do it. I have two factories where I can use, I think. Yeah, only two factories. Cool, shared dream. And we get more factories to use, cool. Dealing with the rights. Some say the right family has spent the last few decades building with one hand and destroying with the other, but compared to the other families, this makes them almost redeemable. Mr. Wright's vision of a more peaceful and stable new Reno is not only incompatible with our own, but if I let him go, I get more stability and get Christopher Wright, which helps us build more civilian infrastructure, civ infrastructure and civilian factories. And if I do this, I get three military factories and more political power. Well, I want more stability, so we definitely want that. And old allies will be next, which will be great. Jack Shadow Churchill speaks out in favor of Anderson, which is our general right here. So during a heated argument in the officers' mess hall today, Jack Shadow Churchill, Churchill has loudly spoken out in favor of Franklin Anderson and his ideas about the Enclave's future. A few choice words were aimed at both the mutants of the NCR and our president, Douglas Granite. While the officer in question may be a capable leader in the field, we should note the opinions of the commanders we appoint to leave. What we say in the mess hall and over the radio will always affect their loyal soldiers. Um, I get more war support but lose technocracy, which we don't want, so I have to do this. Because, well, I basically have to purge enemies or people that we don't like. That could end up biting us in the booty. 
for this. I'm going to give him Offensive Doctrine because he gets more attack, which is something we could always use. So now I'm going to have to wait to get 60 more political power so I can hide from NCR activities. Ooh, I might not be able to do that within the next couple of days. What are we doing, old allies? Hmm. Dealing with the Salvators. The Salvators have been useful to the Enclave in the past, dealing with us in order to expand their own influence in New Reno. Perhaps they can be useful once again. A puppet ruling New Reno in our name could help make the situation in the city less suspicious to any outside observers. Uh, Mr. Salvador's old smuggling connections may also prove a valuable resource to us. We should decide to keep him alive. He could be a puppet, which we lose. Um, legitimacy, which we don't want. We rule New Reno now. He can live under house arrest. We want more stability, like I've said before. But actually... I could really use a little bit more political power, but we're going to do this. More stability, so we're at 51%. I need more political power, so I'm not going to choose another focus yet until we have a good amount so we can hide from NCR activities once again. And eventually get done to send out spies because that's actually going to be very, very important to do as well. All right, 1.81 uh, political power a day is great. And we're going to just barely get to there in time. Leather armor, nice. Um, at this point, I don't mind choosing the next political, the next decision. Checkmate will be important, but I don't want to deal with Bishop yet because I don't have the political power to do so. You'll see why in the next episode. But we'll do anti-communist propaganda to get a lot more political power first. Get another research slot. In which we will... Well, not get another research slot, but use it. Um, it's almost 2276. Oh, wait. I forgot to do this stuff. Crap. Oh, I need more research speed. Let's do that. Oh, crap. That wasted a couple days. That's not good. That's really not good, actually. Um. In 12 days. I don't have 12 days. I have 6. We have a crisis on our hands if we do not do anything. You know what? Let's see what happens. Happy 2276. Let's see what happens. And because of that, because I did nothing... I either have to reduce my resource efficiency gain by 50%, which isn't bad, or lose attack for 50, 90 days, or construction speed. Well, seeing as we have two civilian factories, I want that to work as fast as possible. I don't mind losing resources, because that doesn't really hurt us, and this will be the final thing before we quit out today. A break fight, a fist fight breaks up. A heated argument turned violent in the general staff cafeteria today. Unsurprisingly, the topic of the argument was the recent elections. Though many claim he was provoked, none deny that the person supporting the reformer caused through the first punch. This normally insignificant issue is gathering a lot of attention, and we have been asked to intervene. An ungrateful position to be in, since defending the aggressor would reflect badly on us, but condemning him would come across as a stab in the back to the most zealous reformers. He had it coming. Both share the blame. There's no excuse for striking a fellow officer. I'm going to do that one just because we already have 59% support. We get more political power. Music Vault found. Oh, I haven't seen this one before. During the efforts to clean up some of the smaller criminal organizations in New Reno, Enclave soldiers have stumbled onto a treasure trove of pre-war audio tapes. The vast majority of these tapes have survived and holds long, old, old tunes of the New World collected by a wealthy crime lord over the course of decades. The propagandistic value of such a collection should not be underestimated as very little music is available to those within the Enclave. Interesting. Uh, we get, oh, wow, I did not see this one before. Promote patriotic songs. Plus 10% war support and plus 5% stability. More political power and stability. Promote old world nostalgia. More technocracy and stability. Well, we're okay with intellectuals right now. Right, we're still 55%. And we're increasing every day. So, I don't mind more war support because that could really help us. Let's do that. Yes, political power is great. But the less war support I will need in the future, the better, in my opinion. That's good, that's good. And now we can actually do demote purist officers. Um, but before we do that... Oh, crap. I, that would be nice. Because I need to send out spies. But regardless, we're going to do officers first because that only hurts our organization and attack. And we're not in a war right now at all. So with that in mind, this is the end of the first episode of me playing as the Enclave. Yes, it ran on longer than half an hour, but whatever. I enjoy playing this game. So with that in mind, thank you very much for watching. Leave a like if you liked the video. Subscribe if you're new. I know I'm talking fast. And I will see you tomorrow as we continue to build up the Enclave into the new, old United States of America. Thanks for watching.